We recently sat down with actor Peter Parrow. Take a look. In his 30-year career, our next guest brought some of the daytime television's most memorable characters to life. And now he's making his mark in primetime. That's right. Here to talk about his role in Tyler Perry's The Haves and The Have-Nots on the Oprah Winfrey Network is veteran actor and soap superstar Peter Peros. Oh. Hey, Peter. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Good Lord, to be here. The drama. Yes. The oh, drama. yes. I always yes, tell yes. people, I said the haves and the have nots is like our generation's dynasty. Okay. It's like, because you all yes. bring some drama. So tell us more about the show and your character. Okay. Well, the show is primarily based around the, the Cryer family, which is uh, John Snyder is the head of that family and Renee Lawless. And they're, what happens with them and their housekeeper, who's played uh, by Crystal Fox, Hannah. I am John Snyder's best friend, we're both lawyers, or judges, mm -hmm. getting ready to run for political office, but he's having an affair with the maid's daughter, <laughs> who's blackmailing him. Oh yeah, good drama, yeah. We were trying to get that all straight, and my son came out, and my wife uh -huh. hates it, and my, I love him unconditionally, and uh -huh. we're hiding stuff from each other, and telling, it's, cra it's crazy, Ooh. crazy, crazy. Okay, well, so, you mentioned, you so mentioned that your son coming out, and we have a clip of that scene, so let's oh, take a quick okay. look and we'll discuss more. Get into All right, it. Okay. very cool. What if something were to happen to him? Something certainly will happen to him if he continues down this road. Meaning? Heartbreak, David. Every day. It's bad enough. He's got to fight the fight of being a black man in this world, and now he's got to add that to it? I won't have it. You know how many children commit suicide because they would rather be dead than come out and face the cruelty of this world? I am not talking about this world. I'm talking about my son. Yes. And Jeffrey would not do that. He's too strong for that. Exactly. He is. Oh, getting deep. I told you. Oh, wow. What yeah. drew you to such a role that's so serious and so deep and with so many twists and turns? Well. I think I didn't know really what my role would be like oh. initially mm -hmm. coming in. It was just the opportunity to work with Tyler Perry mm. on Oprah Winfrey's network. It, it was his first dramatic series. Mm -hmm. It was the first scripted series for her network. And so I knew it would be, I knew it would be historic television. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that it would be as big as it is, as it's blown up. It's like. Now, what was it like, though? To, I mean, you're naming some heavy, you're naming the heavy hitters. Right, right, right. What was it like to collaborate with, you know, with Tyler? It's, it's, um, it's really surprising. It's interesting because he writes and directs every episode. Mm -hmm. So we get these scripts and the first, like I say, I got the first six and I said, well, let me read and see what one is written. I read four of them, like straight in a <laughs> row. And it's just really exciting because the stories are so... Um, engaging and unpredictable. The character, you asked about the character, usually I play nice guys, and this guy has a sort of shady side to him. Mm -hmm. So that's what's uh, inter something interesting and exciting and different about the character and what I get to do. So it's really, it's really a type of role that I've never played before. And it also seems somewhat of a pushover when his wife's going at it, because she's like the ball buster in the relationship. No, no, he's, he's, he's like, no, a, he's not. He's not a pushover. No, she's he's, just strong-willed, huh? Is that what it is? She's strong-willed. He's okay. laid back about everything. Uh -huh. But <laughs> when it comes time, Time to to um, I'll say lay down the hammer. Oh. He'll, he'll he'll lay down the hammer, but it hasn't uh -huh. come time yet. Uh -huh. So what? Um, because it's like a relationship. Something you see in in um, the show now, you see where their relationship is, but you don't see all their history. Mm. So they've been together through a lot of stuff. So he's not just gonna fly off the handle. He knows she's strong, and he's trying to bring her along to where he's at. So he's not, he's not a pushover, he's not afraid. You know, people say, oh, he's so scared. Why is David scared of Ronnie? <laughs> he's not scared of her. So, but. Well, it's, also, it's also good to see that a father is supporting of his gay son, and especially in yes. this environment. Right. How has the public and your viewers responded to that storyline? Well, it's, I think they've responded to the, positively to the matter of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. That no matter what, your kids are your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, you know, you could say nature, nurture, whatever. They're your kids. They're, they come from you. They're you're, so I think it's important that you have to love them for who they are, for who you've created. And, and you know, it's uh, difficult 
Veronica has a vision for what she thinks mm. the family should be, but I think David's thing is, regardless of what you think, first base, first place, love our son. Wow. What yeah. would you like to see for your character? You know, I know that you, you don't create. What would you like to see for, for him in the future? What would I like to see for yeah. him in the future? Uh, I would, I would, I think um, he's got to, he's got to deal with Jim a little more, get that mm. kind of go. I think there's going to be uh, some confrontation there in terms of always having to clean up Jim's mess mm -hmm. and kind of let Jim handle some of his stuff. So I'd, I'd like to see some stuff with that. And there are things coming up where I think he's dealing with Veronica in this next season a little, a little better, a little stronger. So I think I'll, I think those are some things I'd like to. Well, whatever is happening with your character is going in a great direction because this is not only the first scripted show for the OWN Network, but it's also one of the most successful. It's leading in the ratings. Congratulations. Yes. Did you yes. have any idea it was going to be so popular? And why do you think it's resonating with audience so much? I think, um, no, I didn't know it would be <laughs> this big. I mean, Tuesday nights, we're like the number one cable show, and we're mm. only in, owners only in about 80% of households. It's wow. not in 100%. So that, that we're getting, I think our last... Uh, our last show was 3.6 million mm -hmm. viewers that we had, so something like that is is, is pretty is pretty huge, and um, yeah, it's just great to be a part. I forgot the the second part of the question, uh -oh. but it's great to be <laughs> a part of a part of something that big. And what was the other? Uh, and more importantly, and, how is it working with Oprah? Like, oh, it's oh, on, oh, and Oprah so let's and get Oprah. right to that. Let's get right to that. <laughs> no, Oprah is great. In fact, we're here for um, I'm in New York for our own event, and just the vision that she has for the network. Mm -hmm. in terms of being something positive and having a positive impact on, on viewers is, is something great to be a part of. Oprah and Tyler have such vision for, or, or such a sense of purpose in what they create mm -hmm. that it's really neat to be a part of that feeling that it's more than just numbers or money, it's how it impacts people. And, and, and Tyler Perry is notoriously hands-on, of course, as a director and a writer, but you guys right, have right. a really grueling schedule. It's we not should, like what, what everybody else is doing in Hollywood. How do you guys keep not, up? It's not like, how do, how, how do we keep up? You have to keep up because he's there every day writing, directing every episode. We shoot at a pace that for me is not horrible because I was on a, so I was like on As World Turns for seven years. So I'm used to shooting roughly an episode a day. And that's really about the pace that we shoot at on our show which is very similar to a soap pace as opposed to a typical primetime pace, which is closer to a weekend episode. Mm. You know, we do, we do uh, that much work a lot faster. But because of the way the studio is structured, we're able to do it, and it doesn't feel like it's a lot of pressure. Now, now so you mentioned your money. soap, so let's get to the soap world, because you okay. were in soaps for many years. What drew you to that world, and how was the, it to play Ben Harris for 10 years, was it? I, I was, uh, well, I was seven years for uh, Ben Harris uh -huh, on so. As the World Turns, uh -huh. and two years of Ben Price on uh -huh. One Life oh, to Live. Oh, okay, I was getting the Ben's mixed so, up. Yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. So, <laughs> All so I was Ben uh, for about 10 uh, years, but right. two different Ben. <laughs> and, and really, what took me to that was coming out back out to New York because I was born in New York, Brooklyn. I've got a lot of family out Brooklyn. here. Mm. Yeah, 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 Brooklyn. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to come out. I was living in California and wanted to come out to the East Coast working, you know, okay. with a job as opposed to coming out and seeing what would happen. So that was really what brought me into daytime was doing. I had, had a small recurring part on Young the Restless years mm -hmm. ago uh, back, ooh. I'm trying to think of when that was, maybe like 82. I was a few years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. A few years, a few years back. But um, yeah, so that was that was what took me to daytime. And then and then uh, from that, while I was out here, had a chance to do As the World Turns. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, neat because it was a Christian character, which I really wanted to play. Mm. And um, well, you so played the it. gamut here. Yes. Okay. Yes. And your first role was on Knight Rider. That was right? my big break. That was my <laughs> first role. Oh, my big yes. break. How'd RC3. How did you get the gig? That was um, that was interesting. It was uh, it was a kind of long audition process. They were trying to add this character, and it came down to me and Blair Underwood. Oh. Actually, so it was fun. And I remember we had we had the, a final callback at the network, and it was like they made the decision. I don't know what day of the week. It was like a, a Tuesday, say it like we had this, this audition at 9, and by 2 o'clock, I was on a plane to Chicago. Wow. wow. So it was, like, it was like down to that, making that final decision. Wow. And, and uh, the first episode I shot was in Chicago. And actually, Blair was in it. It was called Night of the Juggernaut. Blair 
they ended up giving him a role in that episode oh, as well. Nice. They share well. Yeah. They share okay. well. Right, right, right. It all works out. So yeah. I have to know, you know, the car. Did you get to ride in the car a lot? Did you go, you know, out it was the car? Right. The car. They were. They had about total. I think there were thirty something cars really? over time. But usually there were about sixteen different cars that they would use because they had a computer car. Mm -hmm. They had jump cars. They had crash cars, they had speed cars, they had blind drive cars for when kids supposed to be driving so themselves. So a man's dream, basically. Right. So they had, right. yeah, 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 yeah. All those cars were like, can <laughs> I take a kit home? You know? But they you never let plenty. me drive kit. Oh. I had my motorcycle, but All right. David kit. drove kit, and that was, All that right. was it. Fair so. enough. So what's next for you? You're doing so much. So we will see. Um, hopefully some film stuff I would like to do, doing some uh, writing and producing. But it's the, the nature of the industry is you never know. Mm what is going to be right. until it actually happens. There's a lot of conversation and things that seem like they're going to happen mm -hmm. that don't necessarily happen. Mm -hmm. But because, because we do shoot quickly, it takes like about two months, mm -hmm. there's a lot of time in between there to do, to do other things. And hopefully, like I said, I'd like to do some film work. And, Right. Well, we'll see. Well, we want to, and we want yes. to see it. Yeah, and maybe yeah, you'll yeah. get to drive the car. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe okay. they'll see this. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll see that's you right. Remake. Bring back, bring back another, another Knight Rider. Yeah, exactly. Knight Rider, the next generation. <laughs> in, uh, All right, Peter. Drive. Thank you so much for stopping by. Okay. Sure All right. thing. Thank you. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.